the mic we were using. So we used the super expensive one in the beginning and it crapped out and we switched to the regular old SM7 and I just tone matched the frequency response of it and I couldn't hear a difference between the really expensive one and the SM7. So SM7 for the win, I suppose. And we actually recorded everything via audio movers listened to from our the from the comfort of our own homes which was really nice so no no in person interaction we just did it all online and there was like a ton of latency but i just routed it so he could hear himself without latency and i just moved the take and kind of edited it on the fly so that's how we did that i think this is not without anything but it's it's raw, except that EQ I was talking about to uh, tone match the mic that we used before. So that's him raw. Then I have some control for the p- that kind of stuff, like the low end uh, puff stuff. And- <laughs> Just controlling that. I, I'm actually controlling it so I can keep some of it. I usually feel like 150, so now I'm a bit lower and 12 dB per octave instead of 18. So I'm trying to keep some of that low end somehow. Next is this thing. And then we have my favorite plugin. This just takes out any like hard, like anything exceeding its tre- threshold, and usually that's bad stuff. So it just takes care of it, which is really nice. Uh, I actually the way I'm doing it here is like compressor, Gullfoss compressor, but nowadays I kind of just go Gullfoss gain reduction and no more compression. Uh, but this time I did. So here's some EQ moves, cutting some 400, cutting some 800, and more like uh, 11, uh, 1176 style EQ. Sounds crispy. Then we have Decapitator. And then we have this. This is funny. I usually would do a bunch of settings on this and blah, blah, blah. It's just funny because the default setting is by far the best setting. So that's a tip. Use the default setting on that. All right. Then we have a couple of FX stuff. I wanted to make like some words pop out more. So I copied them over on this effect channel and sent that straight to all vocals instead of the screen bus. So it kind of goes outside. And what, what I did was I pitched it down and format, formatted it down and distorted it more and put a doubler on. So it's like stereo, very low, but it's a dub. So this is by itself. And without and and this like the original take is this. So if you combine them, and on top of that you have this left and right. So it's real fat. So just some words, like here. Kind of wish I had it louder now that I listen, but yeah, it's real sick. Uh, and this setup is weird. I should have like a folder here, a routing folder, and have the plugins here. But I, I kind of this was in the beginning when I started using folders. I didn't fully understand. So we have these pan tracks that I said. These just go to the pan bus. So this is like left, right, left, right. Uh, sometimes there's like over- overlap. So I needed. 
uh, I needed uh, four. And these go to this, which is the PAM bus, with ha which has a compressor that kind of controls so that it's consistent. And then it goes to the screen bus. But I also have panning that is loud. I kind of just call it loud. And that doesn't go to the PAM bus. That's like when the vocals are left and right and are replacing a take that is in the mid or they're supposed to be like super loud so that's what i put them there so let's go to the bus let's just find a place that i can play first is the compressor <laughs> Uh, then more low-end control. There's probably some resonance stuff. Yeah, that helps a lot. So I'm kind of finding a place here that it triggers the whole thing off of. Some EQ. Distortion. Uh, multiband. This is just standard as far as the attack release. BTM. More distortion. Okay, this is like a distortion I automate on and off. Let's find the place where it's on. Then we have doubler. This is also automated. A doubler and uh, vocal rider. Vocal rider is being should have a feed from these stems that I haven't set up, but maybe it doesn't matter. In the mix, the vocals are being leveled to from the actual music. So listening to the music and leveling the vocals accordingly. Yeah, we have some effects here. This is like a weird, this is like a weird panning effect. So I'm gonna loop that part and crank it so you can hear. Just makes it way more intense sounding. We have my vocals, some screaming stuff. Very good for the throat to do that. Not at all hard. Let's see. Kind of the similar chain I see. Open! 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 All right. Yeah, basically the same settings. Uh, I'm cutting a bunch of 900 from my voice though and 3K because that's kind of what I'm generating. And the same, it's the same bus. I just wanted mine on a different channel so I can create, uh, so I can combine them freely. Then we have a bunch of effects. So you can see here, I mute stuff to make it super quiet on certain parts. And I also turn off the doubler a lot to make it super in your face, like here. <laughs> So it's like super quiet in your face for that when it stops and then when it comes in all of the effects come with it. Same there, I want it super quiet, super distorted. So there's a bunch of automation like that. Here's some delay automation as far as like the notes value. And I automate the reverb up here. Hey, 
So as you can hear, there's a lot of automation going on as far as stuff being quiet and being full on. Here's a manual delay thing I did. So just fading up and then some regular ass reverse stuff. So that's basically vocals. 